Okay, in this tutorial we're looking at the next section 2.2 .2 in Math C30. And what we're going to look at now is the effect of a coefficient in front of the x um, in terms of the sine and cosine graph. As well as the tan graph. The tan graph is very similar in this case as well. And the best way to do that is by comparing two graphs and seeing what happens. So the quickest way to draw two graphs is by using our calculator here. So let me zoom that in again. All right, so what we're going to have in our window, let's turn on our calculator and clear this. Oops, clear this. And let's go to our window. Now, I'm using radians, so it's still negative 2 pi and positive 2 pi as our x max and minimums. Our scaling is still at the pi over 2 radian uh, interval and my maximum and my minimum in this case I'm going to just change them to 1 and negative 1 because we're, we're not changing we don't have an A in front of them so that, that's not going to change here for this one here so negative 1 and a positive 1 and now all I want to do here is I want to do a sine graph, a regular sine graph first. So type in sine x, y equals sine x. And again, you, that's our x interval button there. Then go to the next one and, and type in our graph that we're going to draw. So type in sine bracket 4x, close the bracket. Hit the graph button. There is the regular sine graph. Okay, remember our maximum minimum is at 1 here. And notice this one. Whoa. How many more bumps are there? Well, you get the 4 squished down into, if you look at it here, we had 1, 2 maximums in our regular graph. And now we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we have four times as many maximums and four times as many minimums, making the period four times as small. That's what it's done. So let's, uh, let's clear that. Go back to here. And now, instead of putting 4x in there, let's put in a negative x. Let's just not have, let's clear that. And let's type in sine bracket negative x. Oops. Negative x. Close the bracket. See what happens. Graph. There's the sine one. Regular. And then the negative one. So all the negative x did there was shift it. A made a maximum, a minimum, and a minimum, a maximum. Okay, so we've got to be careful when you have the negatives in there. Okay, let's clear that. Let's try a, a fraction in here. So go back to here, type in sine, bracket, and let's go 0.5, or a half if you like, x. Close the bracket. And hit the enter. Or hit, not the enter, hit the graph button. So there's the regular sine graph. And there's the half sine, half x sine graph. So it's stretched out. So it's made the period much larger. Okay? So we know now that the b coefficient in front of the x affects the period. If it's larger than 1, it makes the period smaller by that fraction. If it's less than 1, it makes the period larger by a certain fraction. So how do you draw the sine graph here? So what you do in these cases is you draw regularly. You know that you're going to have a regular sine graph. So you always draw the four points 
the four regular points. But don't, in this case, because we're doing sine graph and it affects the period, don't put in the regular 90 or pi over 2s and stuff. Leave them blank. So what you have to do is you have to calculate what the period would be, the, the negative period and the positive period. Okay? So we know that first sign, it goes from one period goes from 0 to 2 pi regularly. So what we do is we replace, we say that one period, we calculate it. I'm just going to move this up so we can see better, make sure that's in there, and unzoom this. There we are. Okay, so we put that regular 4 before and 4 after, one negative period. So one period for sine is from 0 to 2 pi. So what you do is you write in, normally it's 0 greater than or equal to theta. Theta is greater than or equal to 0 and it less than or equal to 2 pi for one period. Okay? So what we do is we, we pretend this, this is your normal theta. So you replace theta with 4x. So put 4x in here. Okay? And then you divide everything by 4. So it's going to be from 0. Divide by 4 is x. And divide that by 4 is half pi. Or 2 over 4 pi. So that means that this is 0. And that this is actually pi over 2 or half pi. So that's regularly 90 degrees. So it's a quarter as big as it was before. So then all you have to do to calculate what is in between here and here, what's halfway between 0 and 2 pi? Well, half of a half is a quarter. So it's pi over 4. Okay. And one way you can do that is you can take this plus this divided by 2. Okay, So what's halfway between a pi over 4 and pi over 2? That's a little bit more challenging, but if you look at it, you are, you are uh, going in, in a certain number of units here, and you can do the same method. You could take 1 quarter plus 1 half and divide by 2. So that would be 3 quarters divided by pi divided by 2. So 3 quarters divided by 2. That would be 3 eighths pi. Oop. Okay. Same thing with this one here. Between here and here. 0 plus a quarter is a quarter divided by 2, which is 1 eighth pi, pi over 8. So you can see that we are, as we're going, we're adding an eighth. Add an eighth, that would give you a quarter. Add an eighth, it would give you 3 eighths. Add an eighth, would give you a half pi. So this would follow the same path here. And then once you have that, except these are negative values. Once you have that, if I want to draw one period of it, one positive and one negative period, I can now just say, okay, well, there's my one point, there's my negative one point, and draw it in. A regular sine graph using this, the regular intervals that you would see in a sine graph. Except you, these have different change now because of the B value. So just draw your regular shape sine graph in here. And that's how you would draw a graph of y equals 4x, or sine 4x. Oops, I didn't go down far enough for that one. 
and went down a little farther there. Okay, so that's how you would draw it, and the most important part of that is to make sure you're doing your labeling. 